Alrighty, it's Wednesday, February 27th, almost the end of the month, 2013, and we're continuing on this whole discussion on girls on YouTube. And as I was saying before, and we left, and I'm going to allow this, uh, use this, uh, this track, you know, keep it playing on so you can hear it. Uh, i got our Greek music in the background, because I'm Greek-Syrian. Uh, I'm not the average European, I'm not, not fundamentally European. So... Uh, and this goes on to say, you have the Asian community, which is Kawhi, then you have the cosplayers, uh, which do, uh, uh, which morphs into the beauty community because it uses a lot of makeup. It's, it's about playing characters. These are all, all these RP games. Uh, the guys have Dungeons and Dragons and Knights and so on and so forth. These, these are the, uh, the, uh, the, the sort of the, uh, the Middle Earth. Uh, Lord of the Rings type of things, but the girls have the Japanese anime as their cosplay, their role play, and they do an amazing job at it. For those of you who know Vocaloids, there's a whole Vocaloid community out there. There's an anime music video com community out there. Um, <laughs> um, what else is there? You can do uh, historical searches. Uh, on on the history of music on YouTube and come up with uh, research quality material. I mean, you can I I use YouTube and the reason one the reason I'm on YouTube a lot is that you can do an enormous amount of legitimate high end high quality research on YouTube. There is an enormous amount of material out there. There are grandmothers you can watch if you're um, I, I'm from the um, I'm my background is Greek Syrian. I have grandmothers who were from Syria, and I wanted to see what their village life was like. And I could hear stories from, from my family, my you know, my uncles, my aunts, and so on and so forth. I hear stories about these high mountain villages, and so I, I went to say, "Oh, let me see if I can find it." And I did on you. I found I found these old grandmothers, these 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 the the jitus, the the the, the, uh, the yayas. The, the papoos in their villages, living in their villages on YouTube. Well, I heard the music. This is the music that I'm playing right now. These come from the high mountain villages in Greece, in Syria. This is what the music is like. And it can all be found on YouTube. This is not necessarily popular stuff, but you know, there's so much there. The, the popularity and, and, and the, the, the restriction of genre to comedy is. The, the 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 video discussion that that the, the, the documentary was so narrowly focused that it completely overlooked everything that's out on YouTube. And I said, this is an enormous amount, enormous. I said we're listening to music. You would have to go back at least a hundred years, high up into the mountains where the goat herders are, to hear this music. This is goat herder music. And I think it's a lot of the stuff, you know, is so popular. It, it, you know, in terms in terms of if you're a Greek person, you love Greek music. The old stuff has come back retro in terms of the old Greek village music. There's many people love that stuff. It's kind of like the old bluegrass music. If you like bluegrass, you can actually find bluegrass on YouTube. You can find the history of bluegrass on YouTube. You can find the history of blues. You can do a whole research paper on the on blues, the music, the blues genre on YouTube. And you can see how on YouTube you can get the videos, you can get the content to show how the blues musicians influenced the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, all the bands that led into modern music. You can see how the blues influenced groups like uh, Beyonce. You can find Etta James. You can find uh, Billy Holiday. You can find all these people who influenced the current generation of singers. Particularly in the R&B singers who created who created the genre of R&B. This is all on the internet. I, I should say on YouTube. And it, 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 when I see the management of YouTube by Google, and I see the videos and these at, at these studios that are coming out at the YouTube studios, and I see the narrow-mindedness that's coming out of it. You have people in charge of something that is large and as valuable as the Library of Alexandria, and they have no idea what they actually have in hand. 
They're completely and fully ignorant of what's around them and what's in their environment, what they have in their hands. And the sad part is, there's a good chance that Google and these people will end up destroying the library just the way the library in 800 AD, the library of Alexander, the greatest library that ever existed, that housed thousands of years worth of documents. Thousands of years of documents. Some group, some radicalized group, came around, thought their intelligence was better than everybody else's, and burnt the place to the ground. All the books were burnt in, in, this, in, this, in this burning of the library. This one centralized library that housed documents sailing out from all over the world. It, had, it was literally our glo the global... It was the equivalent in the ancient world of the Internet. YouTube has this. Google has this. And they're in the process of destroying it. And this video uh, on, uh, on, on YouTube, Becoming YouTube, is a glaring uh, indication of how little these people who are popular on YouTube actually understand what YouTube is and what it has to offer. And my argument to, in, in statement to the girls out there, it doesn't matter what people think of you. YouTube is your channel. It's what you bring to the world. It's your, it's your little statement. And right now, your statement, even if it might be small and no one may recognize it, the library that you leave behind is your legacy. And while it may not be important to someone right now, it may be someone important to somebody who's doing research later on. I mean, how many kids out there are feeling the way they are feeling and put their feelings out on YouTube? Putting your feelings out on YouTube and how you're feeling in terms of, uh, of feeling suicidal, in terms of feeling lonely, in terms of feeling depressed, in terms of your mental illness or if you have a mental illness, that's not going to be a popular thing. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be entertaining. It's there for you to release and, and have a community for, uh, for somebody to talk to. But on the second, on the flip side, on the research side of it, it can also help researchers who are studying behavior to see instead of using a laboratory model, see somebody for real in a real environment, how they're feeling, how they're behaving, how the current. Uh, treatment of the mentally ill uh, in terms of the health services available for them. What impact is that having? That can all be done on YouTube right now. But it's totally missed if you don't see what's there, if you don't see the potential, if you simply close your eyes and say, only thing that's important on YouTube is monetization and popularity. If that is your focus, you have no understanding of what YouTube is. Sorry about that, guys. Anyways, that's about it for this uh, Wednesday. That's for, for this vlog. I will see you on Thursday.